Howdy friends, welcome back to the House of Tone. My name is Wes Lee. I started a YouTube channel to show what my life is like as a band instrument repair technician. I appreciate you coming around. Well, it's another early day during band season, getting the grind on. We're talking saxophones today, specifically how to straighten your bent sax. Today we're going to talk about a pair of restorations that we got going on. This is a cool Busher Big B aristocrat. And this guy is the number one vintage baritone sax in the school systems across the United States of America, I believe. The old con workhorse. Both of them are bent. As we look down the busher, we start here and then we come back like this. So the, this body is bent this, this way. And what we're doing is we're looking down these rods. And so the, the, the bend basically happens here. And then it radiuses this way. So the body tube is bent. If we rotate that a little more, looking through the camera, you can really see it on this one. If you notice this rod, how it bends. Okay. The keys do not bind, so it'll be okay. Now let's take a look at the berry. On our berry, you can see here, it, this, it really curves. Find this rod. Yeah, here we go. Right here. Following that. Now, more evidence on the berry. Let me flip this around. The tone hole has been compromised. This post has been bent in, and you can see the crease in the body right here. So, that's the other giveaway that the body is bent. But when you look down your stack tubes, that's how you can really get confirmation. Let's talk about how to fix this. Behold some cool tools. These are saxophone straightening tools. This is the N61. It comes with these slugs. So you have alto, tenor, berry, and a plate. This is a saddle tool. Um, this one's all stock, except that I added some cork so it doesn't scratch the finish how this works is you would uh, we're going to set it up for the tenor so you take this plug drop your bolt through the plate tighten this on now we're ready to do some straightening so the order of operations to do this you're going to put the plug in the socket but on these bushers and some bundies and some of the other vintage instruments the octave mechanism hangs over the end so we are going to remove that key so while i'm taking this off you want to straighten your saxophone with the keys still attached you want all your stack rods and everything to stay on here because if you take everything off and then you straighten the body when you try to put everything back together it's not going to line up and it's not going to go you have to think of it as a unit so we want to set this plate that we're going to use to drop we want to verify the bend in the tube and i'm looking kind of at the pat at what tone holes that i can see i rotate again i'm looking at the back of the body i'm finding straight points so I'm used like right now I'm using the thumb rest and the chromatic F sharp guard and I'm I'm sighting down those. And it appears that the instrument probably just took a knock and it bent it this way. And it also appears that it's bent right here. This seems to be the strongest part of the bend. So I want to make my tool opposite so that, and I'm going to brace with my hand, and then I'm going to lightly drop it, controlled fall, and it'll push it back. And here we go. One lick, give it a check. 
a little bit more. Pretty good. I'm gonna go. Almost straight. You just want to go slow. You don't want to. You're tempted to really crank back on it, but you don't want to do that. And it's a soft but firm blow. And if your keys were binding, as it straightens, as the hinge rod gets straightened, they'll start moving more free. And I want to go just a little bit more. Yeah. That's really nice now. Okay. So this works with alto tenor, and you saw that it was a big berry plug. Let's talk about those. So this is the big plug that I was showing. Now this is if you gotta get really serious on your berry, you're gonna take off the gooseneck, and then this plug will fit into this body tube here. And it will be the same as the others. What we're gonna do is we'll take off the palm keys and I'm probably gonna have to take off some of the uh, this the F rocker is gonna have to come off and probably the top side of the octave mechanism and it's actually gonna it's gonna be here and then we'll be able to straighten all of this out and hopefully be able to pull this crease out uh, get as much preliminary of that done before I take the keys off or have to pull the gooseneck. So right now I'm going to take off these keys and then I'll be back to show you what how the saddle works. Well I want it to be right there but it don't want to be right there. Okay so I've got my keys off I've got part of my octave mechanism off here. My plan was to put the saddle here in a spot, but on these old cons, the body octave is in the way. It's gonna, it's gonna interrupt me. So my new plan now, I'm actually gonna put it across here. And we'll see what that does. I've gotta get, grab a piece of rubber to use as a spacer. that started there. We're going to get that one started there. Okay, we're just going to tighten these down and get it in the position. I use rubber, but you could also use cork, but I keep little rubber pieces around just for making things, bending things in, the, in my vise so it doesn't make marks on it so this is going to hold tight okay so what we got now is I'm, I'm going to choke up this is where you can see this is where our big crease is I'm going to make sure that the palm of my hand controls here then the edge will strike Here we go. And check. <laughs> That's going to work out great. Here we go. Give another. <clears throat> My keys are working again. <laughs> and the G key actually seals the tone hole has has leveled itself out that crease is still there in the body some can you see the g key here i'm going to move to you and this key the g and the a key so these are sealing again even with the even though the crease is in the body and then when i spy down 
my rods are straight, the high E is still swooping over, but there's a dent in the gooseneck here, so I'll probably have to knock the post back this way. I'm going to go for it again. Give another lick. And then sight down it. And you want to check every time. You want to sight down it every time. And you'll feel when you go too far because it'll feel like it's binding in the other direction. And if you do that, then of course you would flip it over and give it a nudge in the direction that you wanted it to go. Those seal. Body straightening. Who knew, right? Yep, it's just that easy. It's one of those things that people look at and go, ah, but it's really, does it pick up on the mic? These are old and shot pads. Frayed. That's how you do it. So that's the mystery of how to straighten the body of a saxophone. Thanks for dropping by. Thanks for checking that out. A lot of people think that's a pretty scary thing. Notice how I was keeping my hands exactly where the bend in the body was. So I have, I'm feeling for total control. And just like when you're hammer tapping or anything else, you start light and increase your pressure. Get a feel for what the metal is going to do and before you just commit 100%. Feel it out. You'll be golden. Thanks, everybody, for the comments, for the subscribing. Man, it's a really cool community. I really enjoy engaging with everybody. For all you techs out there, I'll put the part numbers down in the description with a link to Faree's Tools. Call them up. Get yourself some of these cool tools. Thanks for dropping by the House of Tone today. My name is Wesley, signing out.